One more time, hallelujah. Okay, good job. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Raymond and I will be preaching the word of God. Before I start, I want to thank Uncle Nietzsche and especially God, Pastor Philip, and the children's ministry for giving me this opportunity to be here today. Can we all please bow our heads down as I share a brief word of prayer? Lord God, I want to thank you for the opportunity that you have gave me today. I want to thank you for everything good that you have done today. Lord God, thank you for making this day go smoothly, and thank you for everything good that is happening right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. The topic I have been given to preach on is repositioning the children's ministry for maximum impact. I have given this topic a subtopic, which is God-given impact. Let us look at some definitions on our topic given. The first definition, repositioning. When I say repositioning, what does it mean? It is when you place yourself into a better and different position to adjust yourself for a greater purpose. This means as children of God, we call to position ourselves into the purpose God has for us. Let us read Jeremiah 29:11. I'll be reading from the GNT version. Okay. I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring disaster, you prosperity, plans to bring you the future, you for hope. Amen. Amen. This Bible verse shows us the purpose and plan God has for us, and that it is peaceful life. Plans to give us a good future, and a life of hope. So be encouraged to reposition yourself into the will of God. My next definition, children. Now when I say children, I don't just mean the kids from Sunday school. I'm referring to everybody who believes in Jesus Christ and has accepted him as their Lord and personal savior. By accepting Christ as savior, we surrender our life to him and become his children. Therefore, God gives us the ability to make maximum impact through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's read from John 14, 16. Okay. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay for, with you forever. Amen. Amen. Now, this Bible verse confirms that Jesus left us with his Holy Spirit who will help us. Let us also read John 14, 26. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Amen. Amen. This Bible verse, this Bible verse confirms that it is the Holy Spirit that will teach us all things. The Holy Spirit is, I repeat, is for only those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior and have decided to follow him all days of their life. Now, let me go over another definition. This definition is called maximum. Now, what is maximum impact? Maximum impact is something at its most. For example, a school can only take 32 students. The maximum is 32, and it cannot go any higher than that. So that maximum means the highest. As children of God, he's calling us to exercise our God-given abilities in maximum so we can make impact. Let us read Romans 12, 6 to 8. Romans 12, 6 to 8. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Amen. This Bible verse shows us that according to the grace we have in Christ, we have been given different gifts, and we are to exercise these gifts in accordance with our faith, level of faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Say faith again. Faith. Again, somebody say faith. faith. 
Good job. The word of God makes us understand that we cannot please God without faith. If we are going to exercise our God-given gifts at its maximum, we need to. We must have faith at least as small as a master seed. Now, another definition, impact. Now, what is impact? Impact is when you have a strong effect on someone or something. In this case, we're trying to have a strong impact on our world and make it a safe and better place. Impact comes in two forms, positive and negative. A negative impact is when you are making a bad effect onto the world, while a positive impact is when you're making a good impact in the world. As children of God, we are to pursue positive impact. This is our calling in Christ. Now, let us read Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Now, the, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. Amen. Amen. This Bible verse shows us that Christ has given each one of us gifts so that the body of Christ may be built up. I encourage you all to continue to use your, your God-given gifts to impact all around you. Another definition, community. This brings me to community. Community is a group of people in the same place. For example, our church is a community to everybody that attends in our church. We are like neighbors to each other. Our schools and workplaces are also examples of communities that we are a part of. As children of God, we are needed and purposely placed by God in, many, in the many communities to make positive impact so we can make them safer and better communities. Let us read Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. This Bible verse shows us that in Christ we have been given authority to go into our various communities to make impact by sharing the word of God, making disciples, and teaching others to obey the word of God. You are purposely placed when you are making when you are to make maximum impact. Do not stop using your God-given gifts. At this time, can everyone please open to Colossians 2, 6 to 7. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Amen. Amen. Hold on, hold on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When you have Jesus in your life and you are rooted in him, he will overflow you with knowledge, wisdom, and power. He'll help you become a better person, strengthen you, and give you wisdom. Without you, without God, you cannot be as good as a person as with God. As we always should live our lives through Jesus so others will want to be like us. Then this will give everybody the chance to repent their life and live their life through Christ, our Lord, Savior, and go to heaven. As Christians, when we repent, we put away our old nature and we put on Christ as our new nature. To repent means you change your life and turn away from something bad you are doing and completely stop and not going back to it. Emphasis on not going back. 
Through repentance, we receive Jesus Christ, and when you receive Christ in your life, your life will become easier. You invite Jesus to come and live in you so that he'll help you become a better person. He'll make you stronger. God will help guide you through tough times. And when you become rooted in God, he impacts you. And through God's impact, we are able to make positive impact. We have to be impacted by God, God before we can make impact. Through repentance, we make a firm decision to walk with Christ, be rooted and built up in Christ so that we can make maximum impact. This message is directed to you parents. Everyone, can we t please take a moment to clap for our parents and guardians? If it was not for them, you wouldn't see a child like me lead opening prayer, worship, dance, and preaching. Our parents and guardians, we want to thank you for the impact you are making in our lives daily. May God bless you all. Now, please turn your Bibles with me to Proverbs 22.6. Proverbs 22, 6. And I read, direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Amen. Amen. Our parents and guardians, are you here? Yes. God bless you for loving us and caring us for us every day. As we just read in Proverbs 22, 6, Train us well so that we will grow up to be respectful young men and women. As I said before, we have to be impacted by God before we can make impact. And as Christians, we know in order to be impacted by God, you must study his word, pray, and obey his word. Therefore, to our parents, I humbly employ you, to you guys to teach, train, and correct us in Christ and his word so that when we grow, we will become responsible young men and women. I'm asking that you encourage us, your children, to read the Bible and teach us how to pray from our young years. Give us directions to guide us in making the correct decisions so that we do not do wrong. Be good examples for us. For example, clean the house with your children and instruct them on how to do it correctly so they can eventually do it on their own properly. Encourage your child to do fun activities like Bible games, educational assignments, and volunteer in working in their communities, especially activities that are Christ-centered, so that both you and your child will continually grow in God. As you, our parents, do this, you will help to reposition us to be better and do maximum, impact, maximum positive impact in our worlds. But if our parents don't show us the good way of living, it will make our lives difficult and irresponsible young men and women. We are encouraging you to continue to teach us the way of God. If you teach your child something and help them repeat it throughout their life, they'll remember, to remember it their entire lives. Children, remember everything you teach. So we are asking you to teach your child, your children, how to do good early. Teaching us how to live in Christ from, an, from our early age will help us turn away from sinful activities. As I bring my message to an end, I want to summarize some highlight, some of the messages that have been shared. In order to make maximum impact, you need to reposition yourself in the Lord. This means to get closer to God through the studying of the prayer, word and prayer, then repent, repent from your old ways, become a prayerful person, for yourself and others, learn to pay kindness forward, share the word of God, be giving, offer your help, choose daily to be a better person, as well as share your knowledge with others so that they can know, also get involved with your community by volunteering, volunteering and treating others with respect. Now let us read from 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 to 20. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 to 20. After all, what gives us hope and joy and what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns? It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. Amen. Amen. The result of making impact in the community is to bring glory to God and to one day rejoice in his presence in heaven as well as well so that it'll make the world a better place for you, 
me, and our future generation. Making positive impact is one of the pieces that will give everyone an opportunity to, to experience the joy of God's salvation when we have found Christ and an opportunity to go to heaven. God bless you all for, God bless you all for your time today and for listening to me. As I share the word of God with you, have a wonderful day. But first, let me do a closing prayer. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Lord God, I thank you for this morning. Lord God, I thank you for everything that you've done for us today. Lord God, I thank you for letting this day go so smoothly. I thank you for everything that you've done well. Can you guys please stand up? God, I thank you for all the children in Sunday school and, wonderf and the wonderful plans you have for them. Please make sure the devil does not get to these plans and destroy these plans. Lord God, please stop the devil from any bad and evil activity he's doing in secret. Let it come to light and let, let it stop. I commit every child in Sunday school in God's hand they, that they will be focused on Jesus to follow his words and make positive impact onto the world. Help them become young successful preachers or whatever they want to be in, the, in their life. I commit all parents and teachers into God's hands that he will grant them grace. He'll help them become better parents. He'll help them be better at life. And he'll help give patience to discipline their children for Jesus. And I hope that all the parents will have a very good life and do everything well. You need Jesus in your life before you can make positive impact. That without Jesus, you have no life. So please, can you guys please thank God for everything that he's done today? Lord God, thank you for all that you've done for me today. Lord God, thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach today. Lord God, I love you for everything that you've done. Lord God, thank you for all that you've done for me in my life. Lord God, thank you for everything. Please thank you for giving me food to eat, a place to sleep, somewhere to live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.